Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, and today I'm going to show you how to make some really simple panda bears. Since we're in the Lenten season, I return to a lot of my verses about humility and pray through those. And panda bears just came out of, I don't know, just some thoughts that I had about animals and humility. When you draw ears on an animal, on most animals, it's like you complete the circle of the ear across the, the head, but then erase the inside of it. So you don't get a full circle on the outside for the ear. If you have the full circle out there, it'll look like Mickey Mouse because Mickey Mouse just barely, his ears barely touch his round head. But with regular animals like bears and that sort of thing, then you just have a half circle for that. For their eye patches and their noses, you can make the panda bear look in different directions. So it can be looking straight at you. It can be looking up by just moving the nose and the eyes to the top of the head. And it can also be looking down. And I'm not gonna deal with the placement of the ears because that's, we can get into a lot of technical stuff. It's still gonna work if you just put the ears in the same place, don't sweat it and keep it really simple. Cause I like to keep things simple and doable. To make some paws underneath of them, if you want them to have praying paws, then just make the two paws touching each other and then give little arms coming out from them. The, figuring out how to end that at the bottom of your page is a whole nother issue. <laughs> You'll see some of my examples. I have a couple different panda bear pages that I'll show you at the when I'm finished here. But you can end them in one big lump, you can end them in two arms, or you can just not have paws at all. And it's kind of up to you what you want to do. If you practice it in your Bible Journaling Made Simple Workbook, then you can see which one you like. With the eyes, they can either be kind of cupped half circles, or they can be cupped the opposite direction. So depending on which way you want them to be looking, they can either be looking down if, if the curve is facing upward, or they can be looking up with their eyes closed if they're facing the other direction. But panda bears are really easy to color because they just have a few spots and if you just put those few spots on, they're gonna look like pandas even if you don't draw outlines around them. And I'm not a big fan in general of outlines around stuff because they look a little more realistic if they don't have that. But I'm just gonna practice a few of my little panda bears here using some watercolor paints and you, you can use all different kinds of mediums, whatever you like to color with. You can do this with your pencils, with all different kinds of things to, to create your own little pandas. And you can see they definitely look like they're looking in different directions. So that's, that's the angles of where they're looking. Now I'm gonna do a larger one kind of down in the corner and you'll see where I, I kind of struggle when I get to the end of it, where am I gonna put the arms and are the arms gonna hang off the page or they not you know that's just a decision for you to make and what you want to put down there at the bottom you can also put some leaves down there so he's peeking out of some leaves because the rest can look a little weird but if you want to have kind of an outline around it without drawing an outline then put some color behind it i just put some blue watercolor behind the the, the main circle of the head and the arms and then i can start painting in my black without putting an outline around it. Notice that I painted right through his ears. And as long as I wait for that portion to mostly dry before I start painting in the ears, and I'm just working on the face and the paws while I'm waiting for that other stuff to dry, then I can just paint the ears right over top of it because they're gonna be a darker color. And here I'm rounding off the bottoms of the arms and it looks a little weird to me. The panda bears actually have a, a stripe of color across their shoulders and their upper arms that are black. So that's why it looks a little strange to me to have these arms without having shoulders, like the black in the shoulders. So there you go. But I found another page in my Bible that I thought I'd make a large uh, panda bear because that's what I did in the page that I really liked that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. And I just wanted to show you how I created that because I should have been filming it while I made that one because it came out so great. But again, I'm gonna do the same thing, creating those, the head, the big round circle for the head. And I did put just the top of the paws sticking in there instead of the whole arms. So it made it a little less awkward to deal with the rest of it. And I'm gonna put his eyes looking upwards. So I'm putting the spots around his eyes and his nose up toward the top of the head. And then you can choose whether or not you wanna add just a little like, a 
a little O, like his, he's, you know, singing or something, or put a smiley face on him. So it's up to you what kind of expression you want based on what the verse is. Because remember, Bible journaling is not just about making a cute panda bear in your Bible. It's, well, it's not at all about making panda bears in your Bible, but you get what I mean. It's not about the art that we draw. It's about what it says about the verse. And I thought for this one, it was, was a really nice one for this kind of an image, walking in the light and the bear looking up and thinking about, you know, praying that I will walk in the light and that sort of thing. So I'm saving the area at the top for my journaling and the area at the bottom for my bear. So I'm just going to put some color across the top, letting it get lighter right around the bear, but just add more color as I get up to the top of the page. I'm using a flat brush. You don't have to use a flat brush. You can use any kind of brush, but if you have a big flat brush, it'll get things done faster because, you know, when you've got a whole big page, then you can end up with a lot of area to color and to cover with paint. And I didn't like the idea of the brush strokes. And I'm, you know, this paper doesn't move watercolor so that it doesn't blend like it would on watercolor paper. So I'm going to instead just use my baby wipe to tap in some texture. And that just lifts off some of the color. And if you want it to be richer color, you can just keep adding more layers or, you know, there's different paints that you can use. They'll have more color, etc. But just wanted to get some of that color smoothed out a little bit. And then I'll paint in my little bear's face, his little eyes and his little nose. When I'm applying my paint, I'm not looking to make it solid black necessarily, because one of the great things about watercolor is it looks even cooler when it's got areas that are darker and areas that are lighter and areas that fade out so that I'm not worried about it being perfect. It's also going to dry a little bit lighter than it goes on. That's just the nature of watercolor. And I want to be able to draw the eyes on top of this black paint. And if I make it solid black, then you're not going to see any eyes that I draw. I did try on one of my tests of panda bears to draw white eyes on top of that, just that little half circle of, of white, and it looked really creepy. So don't count on trying to do that with, with the white. However, if you get too much black paint on, you can always take a baby wipe and wipe some off. And that will lighten some of the color so that you can actually draw the eyes back in. So on this little guy, he's got the split in the, the area below his nose, and then I put a little, kind of a little smile. Not a huge smile, but just a little tiny bit. You could make a big grin on it if your bear is really happy for something. And then the paws down below here. I definitely liked having less of the paws or less of the arms of the bear showing on the picture. So this seemed a little less intrusive that it didn't have the black shoulders on the panda bear to have just this much of him peeking in. But now I can erase those lines that I had from my pencil and I just have this really soft outline from the blue color. And now I'll just put my little eyes on there with a micron pen and then add my journaling up at the top, which is my prayer about this particular verse. I've been doing more text journaling since I've had my workbook in my house. So here's the one that I really, really loved that I used my little bear for, just with yellow and no paws sticking in. Just did some lettering in the area up above. And this is another one that I put on the sidebar of a Bible, so a little smaller bear with his arms kind of hanging off the bottom. So there you go. Some fun panda bear art that I thought you might like to try in your Bible if there's a verse that would speak to something like this. Thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I will see you next week again with another Bible journaling video. Have a blessed week and go spend some time with Jesus.